80 you said 83 pounds yeah 83 pounds in 91 days nice at any moment you just didn't know if you was gonna survive the night and it's like you thinking like man i know i need to change but i'm so stuck hi i'm chris james and you're watching the healthy alternative today we've got a banger for you because uh we have emerson here and based on what i have heard about his story uh, this one's about to hit real hard. So if you guys are interested in finding out more about him, his journeys, the ups and downs, and where he has uh, been successful, stay tuned, because that's coming up right now. All right, Emerson, thank you, man. Appreciate you for joining us. Hey, I appreciate you for having me, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, I'm excited for this one. I just found out that, you, that you, you're that you from a, a small town that I'm very familiar with. Absolutely, they know Ohio. They know Ohio, man. We yeah, call I it used... the damn city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I used to live in Cincinnati, so I was I was really close to uh, Dayton. Uh, like I said, I went to uh, college in uh, Xenia, went to Central State, which I find out you went to Central State too. So that's what's up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Central State, go Marauders. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we want to we want to unpack this story man. I think there's a lot here. Um I love to learn a little bit about your history. Uh but before we get into all of that, what I typically like to do is give people just a little it's a little teaser. Um just to let them know up front like what are they going to get from listening to this experience. So uh if you want to very briefly and succinctly just talk about some of the some of the things that you have accomplished then we'll kind of unpack how you got to um those end results sounds good brother well my my weight loss journey has been a battle all my life practically um and then in 2015 i had several life altering experiences i was at 560 pounds i um, was in a wheelchair for like um, four years, couldn't wear shoes for four years, wore 74 in pants, eight, nine X's in shirts, and I was at rock bottom. Mm. So I started my journey um, to lose weight and get healthy. And um, with the help of God, I was able to drop 265 pounds um, in two years and three months. Wow. Went from 560 to 295 then got depressed, gained a hundred back. Um, then I went vegan, went vegan for 17 months and then COVID hit. And um, I gained the weight back, not all of it, but a lot of it. So I was like yo-yoing back and forth. And then um, I moved into a new place. Um, the furniture man came and set up the furniture and I couldn't get up off the bed, brother. Mm. And um, that was a life altering moment because I said, I don't want to be living in a place that I can't enjoy. Right. And I was stuck on the floor for like 45 minutes, unable to get up. Mm. And I remember, I remember it just like it was yesterday. The Lord said to go on a fruit fast. And that's, that's how we got here today. Um, I oh. never intended to be 91 days still on this fruit fast, but here <laughs> we are. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful, man. Yeah, see, there's a lot, there's a lot of pain in that story, man. I'm I'm looking forward to kind of unpacking that and seeing exactly how you ended up getting to that point. But um for for you to have, have accomplished what you've accomplished so far is a, an incredible feat. And uh we're I'm just I'm excited, so we're gonna take our time. But what I typically like to do is, you know, rewind things a little bit and look at the history because um as i started to to talk to more people i learned that a lot of the issues that we were dealing with as adults started when we were children whether it was Absolutely. trauma that we never resolved or habits that we picked up from our parents or, or you know whoever was kind of providing for us and we brought them into our adult world so um how how long have you been dealing with weight in general is it were you always a big child or did this did something happen later in life 
where you kind of like saw a, an explosive weight gain? Well, pretty much I was um, active. I was in um, all kinds of sports. I played basketball, football, baseball. Um, and then I was diagnosed uh, with underactive thyroid. Mm -hmm. So um, the doctors put me on this medication, um, but it was speeding up my heart. And they told my parents, basically, if I stayed on that medicine, that it might cause my heart to explode. Wow. So my parents... They took me off the meds, and from there on, it was like a battle with weight, you know, keeping it, you know, at a controllable weight. But then life hits you, you know what I'm saying, and you you discover that food is comfort. You know, it may not be the best for you, but it, it's not going to reject you. It's not going to say no to you. It's always going to welcome you like, come eat me. <laughs> <laughs> you know so yeah. yeah i mean it started at 12 basically you know and um from there on out it was a battle you know and then you know just all kinds of life tragedies you know in between they losing loved ones um it's devastating man relationships you know where you know you get in relationships get rejected you know, and it, it plays with your self-esteem, mm -hmm. you know, and you always realize that food ain't ain't going to reject you. Food's always going to be there for you. So you started using food as a coping mechanism. Now, I am curious to know, leading up, uh, leading up to the point where you, you, you know, the doctor's like, you got a thyroid issue. What were your, what was your diet like as a child? Like, what did you guys eat as a family? Well, we, uh, my family was like pretty well off to do financially. So, uh, we pretty much ate, you know, um, uh, my, my mom was a business woman and she stayed on the road. So a lot of times it was like, grab something quick, uh -huh. you know, some, some fast food or go out to dinner, stuff like that. And we developed the habits of eating unhealthy, um, at an early age. I remember my mom said before I wouldn't eat up until three years old. But when she gave me church's chicken um, at three, it was a wrap after that. <laughs> Very so, interesting. Yeah, we was eating fast food since I was a child. You know, like very unhealthy foods. Um, as much as we want, you know, even at three years old, I was getting seconds. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because, so um, I don't know how familiar you are with my family and our, you know, cause I've, I've displayed a couple of my siblings on, on the channel, uh, Steve and Michael being one of them. And we, we probably started traveling. Um, by the, by the time I was two, we were, we were regularly traveling. Right. And, right. So we spent a lot of time in McDonald's, Hardee's, you know, uh, Carl Jr., like all the different restaurants. And um, all of my siblings had had issues with obesity. Now, the interesting thing, and including my including my dad, but the interesting thing is we were OK for a long time. Like nobody was really overweight until we were probably like teenage like preteen teenage years and then uh what happened was my parents got divorced and my my two brothers went to go live with my dad and they were getting fried chicken on a regular basis and they just they just blew up it was just insane so it's yeah. interesting that you had an experience with chicken and that kind of set it off for you and the chicken set it off for them uh, exactly it's interesting you brought that up about you know the divorce and all of that uh, my mom and dad got divorced when I was a freshman in high school. And you really don't know how it impacts you. You just know that things are different. Mm -hmm. You know, the way you move and operate is not the same, but you just can't really pinpoint that this has affected me the way it has. Right. Do you, do you, uh, did you go with your mom or your dad? Um, it was like a yo-yo back and forth, you know. There was like a a tug of war between the two, gotcha. you know. 
Uh, my dad, that was like my best friend, but he was, he, he, he didn't play, but he was still like my best friend. He supported me in all of my sporting events. And even in school, like when I was acting up, he got a job at the school to make sure I stayed on track. So it was like, I, I definitely leaned more towards my dad, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think most, most, most young men will, especially if the father is there, yeah. you know? So, yeah, but you know, it was a, it was a tug of war and that affected us in a um, negative way as well, because you feel as though you're the problem, mm. you know? When you see the arguments and stuff like that, you feel as though like, I wonder, are they arguing because of me? Right. You know? Because I you, wasn't the best kid. <laughs> yes, it, it sounds like you might have been lashing out a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Did you did you have siblings? Um, I had a sister. Um, God bless her soul. She um she passed away when she was thirty six. Um, in two thousand and fourteen. But yeah, I had a sister, and then after my mom and dad divorced, uh, my mom had a another child who's like thirty two now. Um, yeah, so that's it. Okay, uh, I don't know if it's a touchy subject. I I was curious to know how your sister passed. Um, she had um fibromyalgia. She um had like several things going on in her body. Um, that caused her a lot of pain. I remember she had like a tumor on her back, had to have like back surgery, um, things of that like that. Mm. And um, she just medicated a lot. You know, she took a lot of a lot of pills, and um, unfortunately, they said she um OD'd on the medications. Wow, uh, because the pain was that great. Yeah. You know, yeah, I lost my entire immediate family in a four year period. <laughs> wow. Know? Yeah, it was devastating, you know. So plus I was dealing with a um a marriage that was failing, you know, that eventually, you know, dissolved and all of that. So yeah, man, just life. Life will beat you up if you ain't careful. But you know, thank God. He put something on the inside of us to get back up when we get when we get knocked down. Man, that's 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 rough. And, you know, it's interesting because. Everybody thinks that their situation is the worst, right? I mean, and then right. you hear someone's story and you're like, dang, that's because for a lot of people, their family is their support system. You know, it's the it's the foundation of their world. And to have yeah. that ripped from underneath you on top of just regular life and everything else is going on on top of dealing with, you know, severe weight and, and a failing marriage. A lot of people could see how easy how you could easily just give up, you know, yeah. uh, you know, it seems like in especially in our, our modern time, it's easy to be a victim. And um, so it, it's I've, I've seen I have talked to so many people who have stories similar to yours where it just seems like their whole world is in chaos yeah. and they're trying to claw their way out somehow. And some people use it as an excuse to give up, but yeah, you didn't absolutely. do that. So and trust me, I wanted to, <laughs> I know. You know I, I told the Lord, this is too much. You, you didn't tell me it was going to go down like this. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of times, if we knew a lot of the things that we would have to go through in this life, many would tap out um, now, mm. you know, because there's still things that we got to overcome that we don't know anything about yet. Yeah. But, you know, it's like God got me through the last trial and tribulation. He'll get me through the next one, you know. And faith is everything for me. If mm -hmm. I didn't have faith, I would have killed myself. And that's real talk, you know, because um, it was not easy being 560 pounds, being looked at like you the filth of the earth. Yeah. 
even having people tell you, go kill yourself. Wow. You know, you know, your your parents had made a mistake. <laughs> you know, so people can be cruel towards people in general, but right. especially to people that are over obese and overweight. Mm. But they fail to realize not all people that are overweight, their issue doesn't stem from just wanting to eat. Right. There's a deep-rooted issue. And that issue is pain. Mm. That issue is trauma, tragedy, and life. Just Because a lot of people, you know, just trying to figure this thing called life out. <laughs> and we don't know the blueprint a lot of times. Right. So it's like we just walking this thing out making many mistakes along the way. But, you know, um, God gives us wisdom to learn from the mistakes if we just listen. And, you know, it's interesting because when when I look at some of the great speakers in modern times, people who, who are, you know, mo motivate others or create programs and things like that, they always come from a tremendous amount of trauma and tragedy. Like, it's it's almost as if it's a prerequisite for a certain level of greatness in certain areas. Uh, yeah. Even when it comes to like the health and wellness, some of the greatest uh, wellness practitioners or therapists or healers, whatever they like to refer to themselves as, they, they themselves were very sick, oftentimes right, on right. the brink of death. I just interviewed a guy who, uh, he does raw food, he has a garden, and he, and he like um, compares juicers and stuff. His name's John. And he almost lo lost his life to disease. And yeah, now man. he's one of the the biggest um, promoters of juicers and raw food. And I mean, just it's, it's incredible when you hear people's stories. And so, you know, people have to always remember, and this is more for the audience than you, because I think you probably are, are becoming to understand this, but the the tragedy and all the obstacles that we experience in life, those those things that make it seem like life's not worth living, end up being our greatest weapon, our greatest tool later on life when we when we overcome, and it's also very empowering to go through experiences where you feel like you're you're completely at your wit's end and you're at your rock bottom, because then you realize there's nowhere to go but up, so. Um, I am curious to to dig a little bit deeper into like the daily life of somebody who's 560 pounds because <laughs> we don't get that much, we don't get that insight very often. And yeah. I want people to understand, you know, like what what was it like just waking up and getting out of bed? Um, what was it like when when you hit a, a flight of stairs? You know what I mean? driving a car and things of that nature. Can you kind of just break it down a little bit? Oh, absolutely, brother. I mean, I, I'll, I'll say it was like one of the most painful experiences that anybody could ever imagine because it's like we weren't designed to carry that much weight. So mm -hmm. when you look at it, you're, you're, you're seeing the weight that's on my body, but I'm dealing with the weight that's on my body plus the weight that's on the inside. So right. it's like a thousand pounds of pressure, basically. You know, uh, waking up at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, needing a nap by four, mm. um, not being able, like I say, to wear shoes for four years. My ankles were like so swollen and full of fluid. Um, I battled lymphedema to where my my legs started seeping this liquid wow. and they were cracked. And it felt like just imagine a baked potato in the oven that you've overcooked. Mm -hmm. That's what my feet felt like. You know, it's like they were getting ready to explode on a daily basis. And um just my stomach was like down to my knees, brother. You know, so just imagine the the struggle of cleaning yourself up on a daily basis. 
you know, you're doing whatever you can to make sure you clean yourself to where you don't go out and people talk about you and say that you smell, you stink, yeah. you know, so you spend hours just to go outside mm. to get talked about. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter how clean you are, you're still going to get talked about, you know. Um, man, it was brutal, man. It was like, you know, laying in the bed, um, feeling like you're going to suffocate, you know, feeling like you're about to choke to death. It was plenty of times, like, people would tell me, like, you stop breathing um, in your sleep, you know, because I dealt with sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times I would stop breathing. And they say I would stop breathing for long periods of time. So that was brutal, man. And it was like, at any moment, you just didn't know if you was going to survive the night, you right. know? And it's like, you thinking like, man, I know I need to change, but I'm so stuck. I'm so trapped into this addiction of food. And I remember the devil came to me plain as day, said, I'm going to kill you with food. Mm. He simply told me, I'm going to kill you with food. And as soon as he said it, man, the battle was on. It was like I was just eating for no reason. I wasn't even hungry many times. You know, it was just I could not stop. I remember, like, eating cheesesteak dinners and a 10-piece chicken wing dinner at one time. You know, drinking two liters of Pepsi in one sitting, mm. you know, and already thinking about what I'm going to eat later. <laughs> you know, I'm just talking about like, but yeah, like cleaning yourself up, man. That's, that's one of the worst things. I think uh, a person of obesity has to face um, because it's not a, it's not a pretty process to get clean at 560. Right. It's not as simple as just going to sit on the toilet and, you know, clean yourself. It's not that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times you would be like deep down in mess, you know, literally just to get clean. And mm -hmm. I don't know how raw I can get with that. Like, you know, and thinking you clean and then you spend hours thinking you're clean only to realize you still dirty. <laughs> Missed the spot. Missed the spot. Yeah. Or like got so much pressure on your um your kidneys to where the, the wrong movement, you got to urinate and you didn't even know it. So you urinating on yourself without you even knowing, knowing you had to pee. Wow. <laughs> I was I was actually I was I was curious about that too because I'm I'm thinking the amount of time like you know sometimes 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 it just hits you sometimes yeah. you're, it'll just hit you you know you eat something or you drink something and it just goes goes right through you and I was just thinking like the struggle of having to try and get to that bathroom but I didn't even right. consider that you sometimes you didn't even get the warning it just happened no warning at all. <laughs> That's that's why. And, you know, I really I really wanted to uh, paint a picture for people because, you know, this I think this interview is going to do two things. It's going to motivate those who are in a similar place as you, but it's also going to help to to be like. Um, it's almost like birth control for those. <laughs> uh, it's right. like, yo, don't you, you, you know how they be like, they'll show a whole bunch of bad children and be like, oh, this is natural birth control. Yeah, I want this. I want this interview to be like, yo, it's like preventative care, you know. Exactly. Um, look at look at what life looks like because it's not just about being depressed and eating, you know. It's the struggle that comes yeah. with, and depending on the person and their and their size and everything, they don't even necessarily have to be five hundred sixty pounds to have these struggles, you know. Man, they, they can be one sixty. They can be one thirty five, you know. They can, they can be um, as beautiful as Rihanna, you know, but struggling with the addiction mm. of food because of life, you know, right. um, life, 
like I say, life will handle you if you don't handle it, you know. And um, but the beautiful thing about this man is one of my favorite scriptures is where it talks about in Second Corinthians, where the apostle Paul he said, I only boast in my weakness. He said, I ain't boasting about nothing else but my weakness. Because in my weakness, the Lord's power is made strong. Mm. So it's like God will allow us to be weak on purpose for his purpose. So that he can get the glory. You know, and that's what I told him. I said, Lord, I've suffered greatly. But as long as you get the glory out of this, it's worth it. At the end of the day, if I know that I helped somebody and was able to be an impact, my, my job was done. Gotcha. Yeah, I agree with that, man. That's a that's a very powerful statement, and it's true. When things are easy, what do you need this awesome power for? Everything's fine. It's, right. it's really when... You know, things when you're at your lowest, when things when everything's crumbling, that you need that that extra motivation, that extra power, that extra foundation and that guidance. And um, that's the time when we typically shy away from God, isn't it? Like, you know, it's yeah. it's it's the it's the reverse. I remember I remember hearing people say stuff like I'm going to get myself together and then I'll go to church. It's like, <laughs> you know, what I'm, you know what I mean? Like yeah, they yeah. felt I, I've they, been there. They felt like they had to get themselves to a certain place before they went to the place that was gonna that was gonna help them and support them. Right. Um, yeah, I I wanted to I wanted to ask you because obviously we're talking about food and stuff, but you know, like what were what were the the foods that you were eating on a regular basis? Were were you were you ever eating fruit or was it always junk? Was it chips and soda all the time or? You know what I mean? Cheesecake. Did you ever cook anything? Like, what were you consuming? Um, I was eating fruit, but it was in a limited um, basis. Um, I was pretty much family-sized bags of Doritos, chips, um, knock out a family bag of gummy bears, gummy worms, um, bags of flaming Hot Funyuns, um, extra-large pizzas, with everything on it, of course. Um, two liters of Pepsi, um, Chinese food. Um, there's this little taco plate. Um, and I still think about it every day, right now. It's called, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna put their name out there. I don't, I don't wanna <laughs> blast nobody. <laughs> but their food is so addicting, man. It's like, I lay in bed and think about it, wow. even now. You know, so that's why I know I still got a lot of work to do on this journey. Mm. People like, oh, now that you made 90 days, are you done? No, I'm not done. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be done. Um, but I do know um, that I can't go back to what I, I come from. Right. You know, um, because I, I knew I didn't want to suffer physically mentally and emotionally the way that I have been suffering, you know, to wake up every single day and your body's hurting. That's not fun at all. You know, it's like, I, I want to drive all the inflammation out of my body or being so full of mucus to where you can't even talk. Mm. It sounds like you gurgling, you know, because right. your body is full of mucus. And, you know, I, I love cheese. And I tell people, leave that cheese alone. <laughs> that dairy is not for us, right. you know. Um, and I used to eat family boxes of cereal. Um, man, my habits was just horrible. It's only by the grace of God that I didn't have diabetes, you know. I mean, I suffer from, like, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, but I never got diabetes, mm. you know. Um, but my habits was horrible. Um, yeah, man, I eat. I could eat like, I remember me and my ex-wife, we used to go 
to this one little spot after church and order 40 chicken wings, <laughs> you know, like a pan of wings. Yeah. And go home, get undressed, and just feed. Mm. And then later that night, eating again. So it was some deep rooted pain, man. Like, like I said, when my when my mom and dad and my sister passed away, man, that was brutal, man. It's like you never think that as a child, by the time your parents are 60, they're gonna be gone. Right. Or your your little sister who thinks the world of you, um, who is basically your best friend is going to be gone at 36. Mm. You know, I, I think it was like more devastating when my sister passed away um, more than anything. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm feeling the pain right now, you know, and I usually try not to even think about them. But a lot of what I do now is because of them. Right. The strength that I get is because I just want them to be proud. To be proud of me and to know that I... That I didn't give up. That I kept fighting. I kept living. Because we all going to go through something that that literally going to test us to see what we made of. We can either say, forget this, or I'm going to keep living. And I just want to encourage somebody and let you know, you got something to live for. I don't care. I don't care how ugly it looks. You, you, you are important. You got a purpose to live. We survived pandemics. Look how many people died from COVID. But we still here. Take your time, man. it's only because of the struggles that I'm able to stand here if everything was perfect I wouldn't I wouldn't be the person I am I wouldn't care about people you know um, if I had it all together if I had all the money necessary if I didn't know where my mom my 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 bills was gonna get paid at that time. You know? Um man, I lost 65% of my income. But I'm believing God and God shows up for me all the time. You know. And I didn't plan on getting emotional like that, but man, it's been it's been a journey, brother. Oh, I can only imagine. And you gotta, you definitely gotta let that emotion out. You know, it's good, it's healthy. Yes, sir. So don't even worry about it. You know, it's hard to. I think it's hard to talk about these type of things without getting emotional because we're human. And you know, as human beings, it's important to experience the full spectrum of emotions. Even though you know society tries to tell us as men, there's certain emotions that we should hide and we shouldn't really experience or or express. You know, I think right. that's one of the damaging, one of the damaging mantras of, of modern society, um, telling men to be men and don't cry and don't show emotion. And I think that's why we have so much pent up frustration. <clears throat> right. So and I thank God for my dad because he allowed, he let me know it was OK to express myself in that manner. Hmm. You know, he didn't like chastise me for showing my emotions. You know, I was allowed to be authentic and organic, mm. you know, because a lot of people are walking around uh, with fake emotions, you know, and they just want to be able to, like, cry and, like, say, does anybody know that I'm hurting? 
Does anybody care that I'm hurting? Can anybody feel that I'm not okay? <laughs> mm. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So the next the next leg of your journey you've you've uh you've got a new place you got new furniture and you have your experience where you're on the floor for 45 minutes you know it's interesting because like i'm listening to that story now i've had several men on my platform um that have you know i would say i would say probably like that 350 range up to you know like 550 We've had several guys on, and I, and I remember distinctively hearing stories similar to yours. One guy, um, one guy, I th he was talking about. I think he was imagining, "What if I were to have a heart attack right now?" He was at home with his baby. He had like a newborn baby. His wife was maybe at work or something, and he was he was just thinking, like, "What if I were to have a heart attack right now?" or what if something were to happen? I wouldn't be able to take care of the baby. I wouldn't. What would happen to my baby? And that was like his moment when he realized that as a father, he can't do his duty because he was too big. You exactly. Know? So what was it? So you 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 made that decision. OK, I'm going to do a fruit fast. Can you walk us through the, the thought process and the the steps of the fruit fast like what are you doing what are you what are you experiencing um on this fruit fast well um the day on may the 9th is when when i started this journey um and and it's crazy because i haven't even cooked on my new stove yet mm. um since i've been in my new place i moved in on may the may the I think it was the seventh and I was stuck on the floor on May the 8th mm. and May the 9th. I started to fast. Okay. So, yeah. It was like, I was like, man, I, I cannot live like this. So, um, I remember just, you know, going to the store, stocking up on, I started with like watermelons, um, blueberries, raspberries. I was making smoothies. Um, and I've done, let me just back up a little bit. Okay. Um, I've done like several water fasts, um, cause I've been in your group for, for a while and I've, I've done like several 18 day water fasts where I start off with like seven to 10 days of dry fasting. Um, I find that dry fasting has been the best for me. Um, not everybody can do it. And not everybody can do water. So on this particular journey, I wanted to do something that I could sustain for a long period of time if necessary, mm. you know. And I always liked food as a kid. So when the Lord told me to do a fruit fast, I said, cool, I could do that. I thought it was only going to be for about a month. That was my intention, 30 days to reset myself. You know, um, but here we are, 91 days, mm. still going at it. And basically what I do on a daily basis, I fast all day. Like yeah. on the days I go to work, I drive fast until I get home tonight at 1130 tonight. And then I'll eat fruit till I'm satisfied. I don't limit myself to any particular fruit. Um Whatever food I want, I eat it. Um, I make big smoothie bowls uh, with kiwi. And I'm talking about big bowls. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me show you how big big the bowl is. I oh, eat a bowl yeah. of fruit this big. Yeah, that's it. And it's wood, huh? You got a wood yeah. bowl. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's wood. Yeah, so I eat a big bowl like that, man. And you know, my 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 thing is, if I'm not hungry, I'm not gonna eat just because. I have to absolutely be hungry. Mm -hmm. But then when I'm hungry, 
I'm just going to eat fruit till I'm satisfied. Nice. And I've been doing that every day for 91 days. Not one time of cheating. Mm. And that's all glory to God right there. You know, you just don't go from knocking out eight to ten slices of pizza to um, discipline. <laughs> right, right. Overnight, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. And God has rewarded my obedience with 83 pounds. So. Beautiful. 80, you said 83 pounds. Yeah, 83 pounds in 91 days. Nice. That's in, that's incredible because, uh, you know, usually with juice fat, with juice fasting, you usually see about a pound a day. You're on, you're on target for about a pound a day. Um, usually with like the, the, um, the uh, fruit, you're usually getting like half a pound a day. So you're doing really well. And I, I did want to ask you, cause you, you know, there was a little fluctuate. What was your starting weight? Do you know what your starting weight was when you started the, the, the fruit? I was 440 pounds. Okay. Yeah. And I had battled back from 493. Like I say, my heaviest was 560. Um, then I was like just yo-yoing from 493 down to that 440. And then I would gain again. And like I say, when I when I get that 440, this last time is when I, I started taking action and like really locking in to get control of my life. Mm. You know, and I tell people this a lot of times your environment will keep you from your greatness. Mm -hmm. My old environment where I lived for seven years, I call it the trap because mm. ain't nobody doing nothing. You know, everybody, not everybody, but many of them people just living to get a bottle and a sack of weed. You know, um, you go to work, they sitting outside at eight in the morning, you get off work, they still in the same spot. <laughs> wow. You know, so that's depressing. Or to lay in bed and hear gunshots every other night. Yeah. You know, that's depressing to look out the window and ain't nothing pretty to look at. <laughs> and like now I live by a river. I can walk outside and I can see the river. Nice. You know, so... It's all about the environment, you know. So I'm truly grateful. It's it's interesting you bring that up because I I literally just talked about environment. It might have been like over the weekend or something like that. Um, people don't realize they live in these glass cages, and you might have a goal or or, or you know aspiration outside of the the confines of that cage but you keep running your head up against this glass wall and you don't know what it is or what's going on. And I'll even take it a step further because your environment, your physical location plays a big role, but also the, the things and people you consume, you know? So who is your environment as well as what is your environment? Both things need to be taken into serious consideration, especially when you think about the different goals you have for your life. But you know, this is this is incredible um, because, like you said, it's, it's by the grace of God, because to be able to do 91 days of fruit only the, the, and be consistent with it, that is not a small thing. You know, fasting in in general is, is a challenge, period, no matter right, what type right. of fast. Right. But the consistency it takes to do whatever fasting method for three months, um, that's different whether you're eating or not, even, even just a raw food challenge, you know, yeah. doing, doing like, if you say raw food only you're eating, everything's all good, but that's, it's difficult to maintain. Yeah. Because of, you know, the, the lifestyle that we have now, you've got all these temptations, TV, you know, you got the golden arches everywhere. Um, Tell me, tell me about the, the, the experience um, over this past three months. Have they have you had moments where you wanted to to give up or 
you know, have you had any trials with this fast? And I'm also curious to know, like, what are you experiencing on the positive side? Like, what are some of the good things you're experiencing? Well, um, I, I, I battle daily, you know, again, uh, with the temptations, because it's like when when you're doing something, the devil knows you're doing something. So he'll present temptations for you. Um, I'm always getting offered food at work, you know, um, people offering to buy me pops and um, just just food, like people that normally wouldn't offer me anything like, hey, bro. <laughs> so it's like you recognize where it's coming from. Mm. But every day is a struggle. It's a battle. Um, like I say, I and like you said, we, we are accustomed to eating hot food. You know, we feel as though we have to always eat a full course meal. Um, whether it's a steak, potato, uh, rice, um, bread, um, we feel as though we need that to function. Mm -hmm. And we feel as though if we haven't eaten that way, we haven't been nourished. We don't realize like I can eat an apple and that be just as effective as me eating a full course meal. Right. Like, you know, when I'm eating all of this hot food, it's like causing depletion. But when I eat this electric food like watermelon, it's like electrifying my body, mm. giving my body energy, sustainable energy to where if I was to go out and drink a Mountain Dew, eat a candy bar, I'm going to crash. Yeah. But with this fruit, I'm not crashing. I'm tempted every day, but I'm not giving in to the temptation. Um, like I say, um, where I lived at prior to here, I could walk out my house and walk up the steps and McDonald's was right there. Mm. 30 seconds away. Wow. From the house. And um, I was ordering DoorDash every day to the point where I knew the owners by name. And when I called them, they like, hey, Mr. Emerson, uh, we, we making the same thing? <laughs> and I was spending, man, I was spending like thousands of dollars Imagine. on on eating out. And a lot of people don't realize how expensive it is physically as well as financially. Um, but after this, man, I plan on going back to my plant-based lifestyle. Um, I would like to say I was vegan for 17 months and I loved it. Um, and it's only because of COVID that I stopped. Um, but I definitely plan on going back to that. And, you know, the, the benefits of this fruit fast, um, of course, the weight loss, um, but not to wake up physically hurting every single day. Mm. Um, I got what's called degenerative joint disease where I don't um, have any cartilage in my hip. So to get a lot of this weight off of off of that, that joint to where it's like bone on bone is big time. You know, 83 pounds off of a hip that ain't good is wonderful. Yeah. You know? And um, eliminating the mucus every day, um, that's been a great thing. Um, yeah, it's been a blessing, man. Absolutely. Um, not to hurt all day long. Mm. And not to have to sit on the side of the bed all day um, before I get up to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And not to struggle getting up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one, right? Yeah, I struggled that one night of being stuck, and it was a wrap after that. I'm like, I'm not going back to that ever again. Yeah. Do you do you do any exercise with this uh with this program or are you just doing the fruit? Um I started exercising like three to four weeks ago. Okay. Um but prior to that it was just all fruit. No exercise at all. Yeah. Cause people always ask me, Chris, you know, can I do this? Can I exercise? Can I do this? Can I do that? 
And I'm like, man, just get the weight off first. Cause you, yeah, you yeah. mentioned, um, you had mentioned the, the, um, the impact that it's having on your body. People don't realize that the weight adds an exponent. Like there's an exponential amount of pressure and stress on your joints when you exercise or you do like movements like that. And especially with, uh, you know, cartilage and stuff wearing down, you know, already having joint problems or having inflammation. I always tell people to, um, you know, get the weight down a little bit before they start doing. And then even still, when you start exercising or whatever, keep it light. Like the, that high impact workout stuff that, that, you know, really popular. It's like, it looks good. It sounds good. You, you know, you record yourself and you make your little transfer transformation video later on. But it's not it's not healthy. It's not optimal. Um, yeah, I ain't doing I ain't doing nobody's boot camp. <laughs> I ain't doing nobody's hit workout. Yeah, no EPX ninety. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to I wanted to just get your opinion on it and see where you were at because um, you know a lot of people ask this, and I think I think the majority of people ask because they think. Okay, if I'm if I'm fasting, let's say I'm doing juice or whatever, I'm doing fruit. So let's say I'm losing a pound a day. If I do workout with it, then now I can lose two pounds a day. And it's just like, no, not really. No. Um, you know, it'll help build up. It'll help build up your your physique and and your cardiovascular health and things of that nature. But it's not going to necessarily help you lose weight faster. So right, I just, I just believe like if we eating right. Or if we on a fast and we do it properly, we'll get the same benefits that we would if we were working out. Yeah. You know, um, because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to figure out how to live my life every day and lose weight if I went to the gym or not. Mm. You know, it's about learning how to eat effectively and strategically. Learning how to like not live to eat, but eat to live. Right. There you go. You know, and realize that um, the only reason why we should be eating is for fuel and to sustain us to complete our daily tasks. Mm. Have you, so throughout this process, in addition to the fruit, you know, the fruit and the fasting and stuff, because you said you've been in a group for a while now, it sounds like you've also been studying about different dietary strategies and different ways to approach things. You you understand like alkaline foods and things of that nature. Oh, so good. yeah, it's, it's good because it sounds like you've been working on your mentality. I think one of the big mistakes people make, especially when they do fasts this long, I've, we've had many people in a group do 90 plus days, hundreds of days, 200 days. And when they come off their fast, it's a crash and burn. And it, right, it's right. so frustrating to see because you try to warn people, you try to tell them, hey, there's another aspect of this thing that you have to right. deal with. You know, sometimes people use fasting as a as a method to just stick their head in the sand and not worry about the trauma and the problems that they really have. Um, exactly. But it sounds like you've been actively working on other aspects and not just relying on the fruit you're studying and you're learning. Uh, and you're growing and and mentally you're you're big you're um fortifying your mentality and things of that nature oh yeah because it's like once you when you're on this journey for this amount of time trust and believe you're gonna deal with some some trauma you're gonna deal with some some past issues that's going to come up and you got to deal with it you know, because if you don't deal with it while you're on the fast, you're going to have to deal with it after the fast. Right. So it's like, you might as well deal with it during the process. You nice. know, that way you can be effective afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why would you want to um, go this amount of time only to throw it all away after? I yeah. sacrifice way too much. To throw it all away uh, within a few months, yeah, within a few days and weeks, mm -hmm. because it takes a lot longer to lose it than it does to put it back on. Mm. You know, 
and I just don't want that experience anymore. Good, good. Um, well, it sounds like your goal is just to keep going until God tells you you're finished. You don't really That's have true. like a, a certain amount of days or a certain weight or anything. You just, you're going to go off of how you feel and when you just think it's the, t the time is right. Well, my goal um, weight, um, total goal, goal weight is like 245. Um, and right now, um, I weighed myself yesterday. I was at 357. So um, we're getting there, brother. Yeah. You know, I can taste them 200. <laughs> Bro, you're, you're, you're trucking along, man. <laughs> when was the last time you were in the 200s? You remember? Um, 2019. Okay. Yeah, 2019. So we're heading, we're heading back to the pre-pandemic. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Uh, was there anything else that you'd like to share with us? Anything that I didn't, you know, get to with my questioning? Oh, no, nah, you, you, you pretty much covered it, brother. <laughs> this Good. is like, this has been um, a great interview. I I really appreciate you um, inviting me on your platform. And I just want to shout you out for all of the um, things that you've done over the years in this um, this um, junior, junior. Um, it's been amazing. The lives that you've impacted, shout out to you. And um Thank God for you, brother. Keep up the awesome work. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. And I I, I definitely appreciate you coming on, being willing to share your story and go into so much intimate detail and to be raw with us. Um, I tell people all the time that I think what draws people to our to our platform is the genuine experience that you get, you know. Some of the some of the greatest uh interactions I had with with different people who from the community who were just open and raw and willing to share like, look, this was a struggle. It was a, it was, it was ups and downs. It wasn't all, you know what I mean? Pretty and perfect. Um, right. And it resonates with people and then it helps to motivate them. So uh, I appreciate you for being a part of our community, for sharing your journey. You know, I know you've been in a Facebook group sharing. Um, yeah. So I guess if people, if people want to, you know, just kind of, be able to see your journey as it continues to progress. You you pretty much update in the Facebook gr group regularly, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I want to make sure to invite you to uh, join our AHA community platform too, if you're not already on there. Okay. Uh, that's basically it's basically our our own platform. It's like Facebook, but it's not Facebook. You know what I mean? And so we've got we've got a, a nice size uh, community over there, and I want to make sure that you come and that way they could they could see and get the benefit of your story as well sounds good brother i appreciate the invite yeah i'll send you i'll send you a uh email to um, okay but um listen this has been amazing your story uh was i mean very unique i would say I, you know it's not we don't get to speak to people who uh were 560 pounds and and really hear like the struggle and the pain we don't get to do that very often, um, but I think that it's going to impact people in a great way. Uh, there are people that are currently right now projecting to to be at that same place, and this interview is going to derail them. It's going to get them Absolutely. off of that off of that path and onto a new path. And I know you're going to motivate a lot of people to want to do the fruit fasting, so um, I'm excited for that. And I actually have a plan for the new year to do a uh, a raw food challenge with the group, which is going to be very similar to fruit, but it'll just be like, you know, more preparing different meals and things like that. But um, I think this is a great way to show people what the benefit you could get from doing uh, like raw food or fruit fast. So well, yeah, yeah. yeah this, raw, this raw life is um, electric, brother. You know, uh, when you eating food that is like, original state without having to alter it mm -hmm. that's where the power is yeah 
Yeah. As a matter of fact, I've been I've been working on my garden uh, this year and I just had some cantaloupe yesterday from out my own garden, which that that if you've never had that experience, man, I, I want to plant that seed in you because being able to produce your own fruit and eat it yourself is just a whole different thing. Just there's a you just feel so different, you know, but um, <laughs> I, I was able to eat my cantaloupe right off the vine within 10 minutes because, you know, they say you get maximum nutrition within 10 minutes. Um, and my goal is to to get 80 percent of my produce from my garden eventually it takes time to you know, yeah. So that's that was the just next telling, level. I was just telling somebody that has to be such a feeling of accomplishment to see something that you planted and to be able to reap the harvest. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. You know, I mean, to know that you planted your own food. <laughs> you could you could take care of yourself. I mean, there's a, there's only a couple exactly. of basic things we need. Food, shelter, water, you know exactly. what I mean? Like if you can if you can start taking care of these basic needs, you're free. And that's what they don't want. They want us reliant on them. They want us thinking we can only buy something in a package. You know, a lot of people eat meat stuff. They don't know how to hunt. So they can't even go get their own meat if they wanted to. So right. um I feel very, very good. And I'm, and I'm, I'm locked in. Like I'm learning, I'm learning gardening. Sure. Like I was learning health and wellness. So I plan on sharing everything that I'm learning, experiencing, uh, you know, once I, once I get to a place of mastery. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I plan on doing that brother. Um, I saw this, um, in-house, um, thing that you can, um, grow food inside the, apartment if you don't have a house yeah so yeah that's that's the route i plan on taking <clears throat> hydroponics hydroponics is a good route you get a fish tank you can put fish in there because you want real you know life life in there uh help right, keep your right. stuff clean and smelling good and yeah Pe you know this is this people will always find a an excuse they'll say hey i can't do it because xyz but the reality is you can always make a way and i think that your that's story cool um highlights how you you know you could you could have easily taken an excuse and played the victim with everything that happened to you but where there's a will there's a way you're always going to find a way if that's what you want to do so um, yeah we were we were we were created to overcome exactly you know exactly we were created to have adversity but we were created to overcome mm -hmm. that's life yeah. that's life brother yeah <laughs> All right, y'all, listen, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I'll see you all next time.